What's going on YouTube? Coach Isaac here with a insane pass rush day. We're gonna be working a plethora of different moves today that you can add to your inventory as a D lineman. Doesn't matter if you're rushing the edge as a linebacker or an interior guy, it's all the same stuff. If I had D lineman here and I had interior guys and defensive ends, they'd be getting trained the same way, guys. This is pass rush, this is being an athlete, this is being able to bend. These are things you need to be doing as a linebacker, outside linebacker, maybe even a corner rushing off the edge or an interior defensive lineman. So without further ado, guys, let's get into it. All right, as a defensive lineman, obviously flipping your hips is everything. If you need to get around an offensive lineman, the quarterback is over here, and I'm facing this way, I need to flip my hips, position myself at the quarterback so I can get a straight line. But the key is to work hands and get around this guy in the process. So this warm up, we're gonna do hip flips through this. You could do this with this big guy. If you don't have this guy, you can use cones. I'm gonna show you how to do it on cones as well. But all a hip flip is, it's a stutter, out, turn that toe, throw them hands, flipping the hips. I'm gonna show you guys how to do it here. We're gonna go five reps here as a warm up. Then we're gonna switch it up and go five reps the other side. Make sure you guys are bending, make sure you guys are working the hands. And again, if you're doing it on cones, you can just work the hands on air, it's perfect. So it might be hard for you guys to see, but I'm gonna run through this a couple different times, give you a couple different angles. Approach the first bag or cone with speed. And again, we're just warming up those angles. So as I approach this guy, one, two, and as that two and that three comes, hands, the outside hand doesn't really matter. And then that toes coming forward, pushing through, flipping the hips, attacking the quarterback. So this just weaving through here and on this last one, since I don't have three bags, I'm just gonna bend and then get back downhill. This is a warm up again, guys, but this is the best drill you can do as a defensive lineman because you're gonna do it for the rest of your D-line career. Other side. <laughs> Effective movement is key here. Don't want to see too many steps when you're approaching this guy. Again, you want to get around this guy as fast as possible. It needs to be a one, two, three, one, two, three, and flipping with effective hips, effective feet. Don't want to stutter when you get to the guy that's creating time for the quarterback to throw the ball. It's the difference between a sack and a deflection. It's the difference between a deflection and a completed pass downfield. So make sure you guys are getting through this effectively. We need to have clean feet. This is something you need to rep every single week as a defensive lineman. As I approach this guy, you can see one, two, throwing the hands, pointing the toe, three, and then just moving vertical to the other guy. Again, really just emphasizing the bend because what we're gonna do today is get really bendy. So more you emphasize it here, the better it'll translate, the better your reps, the safer your reps will be later. Again, guys, you don't have to have those big yellow bags to do this drill. You can do this drill with cones. If you have cones, put shoes out. I don't know, put something out. Again, same thing. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three here working probably more than once, get back down this way. And now for this one, that I don't have the bags to really throw hands at, I'm just working a double swipe here. The, the better your hands are, the easier your hips will pivot. Your upper body is going to point your lower body in the right direction, the easier that foot is to turn. That's how you see that back leg kicking. That's how defensive linemen do that. It's because here, I'm out and as I'm out here, I'm throwing this foot and that back leg's kicking. That's how you know you got a good hip flip. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, 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 oh. Again, probably like 10 reps on those. Do them often as a defensive lineman. It's gonna do nothing but make you better. But now we are on to the W bend drill, another D-line staple. 
Another fantastic drill for D lineman, working the bend. Getting to the quarterback effectively, it's all about bend, whether you're an interior guy or you're a defensive end. So this drill is called a W drill. We're missing one cone to put the W, but you can do it as a Z. And again, you can do this with these yellow bags. You can do it without. I'm gonna show you both. So starting here, good stance this time, working a great get off, driving down, taking this hand, dropping it to the floor, scooping under. No move, just ghost. Scooping under and then accelerating through this cone down here. I'm gonna get you guys both angles so that you can see exactly how this drill is actually performed. But again, doing this with speed, trying to just bend, get our ankle in that position, bend through it, lean over that knee, drive it up, drop that shoulder. Again, missing hands over top. Good stance, go three point here, you go two point, don't matter to me. <laughs> So again, we're gonna go five reps on this. This is another drill. All three of these beginning drills are staple drills for defensive linemen. So hip flips, W bend drill, and then running the hoop. Staple, every single time you train as a defensive lineman, do these things. Do nothing but benefit you. All right, working the other side now. So you guys can see the back end of how this drill is actually supposed to work. Again, guys, good stands, effectively bending this is a very tight bend so you have to drop your weight you have to drop that shoulder have to scoop the floor scoop the floor guys whoop and then bring it back up going other side now on the w bend drill or z bend drill if you want to add another cone you're more than welcome to you would just start there drive and then just literally make this thing a w here but i'm just doing a z just for extra bend extra speed Good stance, good knee bend. And the reason for this drill, guys, like if you're on a stunt, I'm an interior guy here, and I got to stunt all the way around. The quarterback's still over there. I got to stunt here, and then I have to drop this shoulder and then effectively get there. Or I'm a defensive end, and I'm just trying to get a really good bend. I'm rushing up field, tackles here. I got too far up field. I gotta drop, I gotta beat this guy's hands low and then accelerate to the quarterback. And for my big interior guys saying, well, seems like a, a defensive end only drill, like being able to bend like this, being able to get low. If you see me come around this bag, you know, th you're this low, like that's how you guys wanna be. If you can be athletic like that, you'll make so many more plays, I promise. It's all about becoming a better athlete and then in the process, you'll become a better positional player. And that's exactly how I train people. That's exactly how I do it in the five-star football package. You know, not every time in the package you're doing something that you're like, wow, this is very hyper-specific to my position, but it's going to make you better at your position. That's why the package is so effective is because I think outside the box on these things. I help players become better athletes and then in turn, they become better positional players. Now, granted, there's a ton of positional coaching in there. Most of it's positional drills, but in terms of speed, change of direction, bend all these things. Like you need these as a football player. Like there are general traits that you need to become the best football player possible. And those traits are speed, change of direction, deceleration, acceleration, bend ability, able to run, run on a curve, able to stop, change direction, able to jump high, able to land effectively. Like these things are what help the best players become great because they don't limit themselves. That's what I did as a high school football player is I limited myself and like, I wanna be the best linebacker possible. So I never focused on my athletic ability. I focused on becoming the best linebacker possible and it had its benefits, but in the long run, it held me back because there were people who were just more naturally gifted as athletes than I am. And I realized that this actually helps you become a much better positional player. If you're just a better athlete, if you can change directions really fast, if you can sprint really fast, like it seems obvious, but yet so many people want to limit themselves. They get a lot of offensive linemen. They don't want to go to the field. They don't want to work their footwork because they're offensive linemen. Same with defensive linemen. That's just not the case, guys. It doesn't matter what position you are. You have to go to the field. Go to the field three times a week. Sprint three times a week. I promise you, putting those things as a priority will do nothing but help you in the long run in your football career and help you achieve your dreams because you're going to do them at the next level. And that's the biggest thing is like, you don't wanna do it now, but you're gonna to have to do it later if you wanna achieve your dreams. And now if you don't wanna achieve your dreams then you're just at, in the wrong place, you're watching the wrong video, you might as well scroll now. But if you do wanna achieve your dreams, you do wanna to go to division one, you do wanna to go to the NFL, you're going to have to become the best athlete possible. These big dudes in the NFL are athletes, man. They can run fast, they can jump high, they can do all these things. And yet you're just focused on becoming the best 
linebacker you can, the best quarterback you can. Like the game is dynamic and you need to be dynamic as well. Otherwise you're just gonna be behind. And like, that's exactly why I program it the way I do in the five-star football package. Cause I want my kids to be better athletes. They will last longer on the field. They won't get hurt. And in turn coaches will say that's an athlete. And then you go to college and there's too many people at the position you play, but yet you're an athlete, you can play another position, get on the field right away. Like that doesn't, the world's not over, you get to play ball and that's the big thing. So don't limit yourself, become a better athlete today by sprinting three times a week, going to the gym, lifting like an athlete four to five times a week, stretching, eating right, getting rid of junk food, hydration, all of these things, guys. All right, guys, as promised, gonna do the W drill, the full W drill with five cones, one, two, three, four, five, all about five yards apart. Everything is about five yards apart on these. Didn't specify that, and then in the hip flips, they're like three and a half, four yards apart. But this W bend drill, you can see it's a W down, full W, bending again. Guys, with five cones, you can do a lot of different things. Couple bucks on Amazon, just spend the money, get yourself some cones. You can do most of the stuff you need with just cones. So again, I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna show you guys exactly how to do this. Again, bending, dropping that shoulder. Even though there's no big bags, we're still dropping the shoulder, still bending. Good stance. You guys will notice my two steps here, there's no wasted movement. This is tight around this cone. You wanna be tight around every cone. Sticking that pivot toe as close to the cone as possible, flipping your hips, driving right back down. Don't wanna get stuck in the mud. If you do this drill and you're getting stuck, taking a while to get around the cones, then it's probably because your bend is not good. We gotta work these things. So watch me do it again from the other side. Watch how tight I am. And then also just watch like how effective it is going around the cones. It's not any wasted movement. I am hitting the cone, I'm bending, I'm getting around it in a definite direction very quick. So make sure to pay attention to that. I like starting outside foot up here because that's just what I do as an edge rusher. Good knee bend. As a coach, coming around this cone right here, I feel that my whole foot was in the ground, which means I'm not bending enough. And I have to bend, you have to bend. This is a dangerous spot to get in as an athlete, but as a defensive lineman, you have to be able to get in this spot. You have to, and you have to stay safe in this spot, and you do so not by being up here, totally compromised up here. You do it by having effective movement, a good breakdown, and then leaning over this toe with your chest, as that chest comes through, you need to be able to pivot that foot. This foot is only in the ground for a split second like this. If you don't bend, you're risking your knees, you're risking your ankles, but if you wanna be a great defensive lineman, you have to be able to do this. To be honest with you, if you wanna be a great football player, you have to be able to do this. If you're running on a curvature, like it's the same exact thing, and we're gonna do that running the hoop here in a second. So plant, put that knee in the ground, bend, bend, bend. That's the whole point is bend. So I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna bend better, bend effectively during this drill. So moving on with coaching myself. Next part, bend was better, toe was better. I didn't get this foot around effectively enough and my heel hit the ground. Don't wanna do that, I need to bend more. So bend and then sell out more. And the more you sell out with your bend, then this foot will correct its course. Not be here like I just did and then it went out here which led to a little stumble to get into the rest of my rush. So one more time. We're doing these drills, you shouldn't be on your flat feet. You should really never be on your flat foot. Certain time and a place, but not now. Yeah. So it felt smoother. It was a little wider, but it was smoother. But getting into the rest of the workout, we got a bunch more workouts to do. Again, we're still kind of in the warm up phase here with the bend, but now we're gonna get full speed. If you're a defensive lineman, you need a rag. Always have a rag in your, or you can do a tennis ball too, but a rag I think is better because it's a little bit, a little bit easier to grab and scoop. This rag is gonna be used in this hoop sprint as a good bend indicator. If you can scoop that rag, your bend is probably good. So we're gonna be running the hoop here, starting on the inside of this cone. Use any hoop you want. Lacrosse hoops are fine. Um, if you have a hoop, you can make one. It's about five yards by five yards. You can make it, you can make it with like 10 cones, eight cones. So we're gonna be here, good stance, sprinting, running the hoop again, bending that toe, scooping this, whoosh, up, back down, and then accelerating through this cone. Guys, this drill requires you to bend this toe, the inside foot's bending towards here, you have to lean over this. Don't run, try to run through the hoop like this. You're gonna hurt yourself, it's not gonna be effective. You need to get low, you can watch me do it in a second. You need to get low, 
this inside toe is bending, this outside toe or this outside foot is swinging and gaining a lot of ground. See how big my stride is? I'm not short stepping the stride. A lot of people go through the hoop and they short step the stride. It's not effective. You're not gaining ground to the quarterback fast enough. And again, every second counts when rushing the passer. It's either going to be a sack or a deflection, a deflection or a hurry, a hurry or a completed pass. So inside toe, drag, inside toe. And you guys need to jog this before you go and just make sure that you're warmed up. See my inside toe and then pulling, inside toe, pulling, inside toe, pulling. Same thing going the other direction. Inside toe pulling, staying tight to this hoop the whole time. So we're gonna be bending for that rag, scooping the rack, it's a dip and rip, scooping it through the ceiling, dropping it right back down. Four reps each side, maybe five reps each side. I'm gonna go inside foot up because I've been going outside foot up all day. And that's the importance of warming up, is I missed the rag by this much because I'm not bending enough. You have to bend at the ankle, at the knee, at the waist, but it's okay. Warm up and do this. I didn't do any warm up reps, so I'm just getting right into it. But actually, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a warm up rep for y'all all the way around to make sure that I'm warmed up both ways, just to show you how much you should be bending where you're doing this hoop. If you're doing this hoop sprint right, you'll be gaining as much ground as me and bending as much as I am. And you gotta build into the bend. This is like you're bending right away, but when you're here and doing a warm up like me, build into this bend. Gain more ground, bend more, bend more. Scooping the ground, scooping the ground, scooping the ground. And that's how to run the hoop, guys. If you can't scoop the ground, your bend probably isn't that good. And that's how you get that Vaughn Miller bend that's just ridiculous, is repping this all the time as defensive lineman. Three times a week, making sure you're comfortable in this spot right here, this spot. All right. Oof. And what happens when you put this rag in there and you try to throw it up right away, a lot of guys, what I've seen coaching them is they try to scoop it up right away. And they're way down here and they scoop it up. And as they scoop it up, their shoulder comes back up. So if you got to work another, like you just saw me, another, and then throw it up, securing the rush, that's more important because the last thing you want to do is have a good bend and then come right up and give that offensive lineman a chance to do like kind of a flyby on that inside shoulder of yours. You're rushing, you beat him, and now he's just like pushing and it's just a split second to get you away from the quarterback. Again, difference between a sack and a, and a deflection, difference between a QB hurry and a pass completed. So, okay, that time you can rewind it. I just missed it. And that's why I don't like using a tennis ball because if you're focused on the ground and picking it up, then that's not the important part of the drill. The important part is making sure you're scooping the ground. And I hit the ground there so I know my bend was good enough. And as long as you can feel it and go, try to scoop the towel. I'm, I'm being a bad example. Try to scoop it, I'm really trying. But if you hit the ground, that's pretty good bend. You know what I mean? So right back into it one more time. We can get it right here. Ooh. 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 I'm seeing, I didn't feel it, but I'm seeing a little toe drag here. Not good. Don't want to toe drag. If I'm toe dragging or you're toe dragging, it's not good to toe drag. Unless you're a wide receiver dragging the, the toe to catch a ball that's out of bounds. Like, you shouldn't be dragging your toe as an athlete. Like, it's not good. It's not a good habit. So if you have a habit of dragging your toe, don't drag your toe, man. Why as an athlete would you want to drag your toe? Other than making it noticeable that, that the ref saw you catch the ball inbound. That's point number one. That's validation number one, but there's no validation after that. None. Like you want to talk about the turf monster. If you constantly, and I see kids do this all the time, they're just toe draggers. They just go to the field and they just toe drag all over the place. Here, here, there, the other way. Turf monster, putting your ankle and knee at risk. This is why people get hurt in the turf. So they're toe draggers. They can't pick their feet up. Like pick your feet up, be an athlete. I know I just did it, but I recognize that I did it. And I don't want to do it again. I'm not going to try to do it again. And I don't even know when I did it or what it looked like, but don't drag your feet. Don't drag your toes ever as an athlete. Other side now, might need a warm up rep here. So hang on if I miss it. I'm imagining as this rag went out of frame that I feel like I kind of feel it, that I was had some distance and that's not good. You want to stay tight to this and then 
scoop here. So body awareness, being a coach, I can coach myself. I think I was too far away that time. Gotta stay tight. And I noticed because when I came up, I threw it and it went that way. Really, it should kind of land right where it went if you have a really good rep. Right where it started, I mean. See a better rep here. Just a little late on the rag throw, but it landed in a circle. That means you have a good bend. And when you throw it, it's going up on this line right here. Cause I'm bending. It's going up, so it should land back in the circle. All right, let me see if I can get y'all a close up of how this footwork is supposed to look. I'm talking about the toe and then coming through here. That was pretty good. So run the hoop as defensive lineman. Two, two times a week is great. Make sure you're hitting the field three times a week, lifting like an athlete four to five times a week. And make sure you guys check out a five-star football package D-line edition. There's defensive end and interior D-line. It's perfect exactly what you need man I, the success stories have been crazy so far so check those out It'd be a good investment three week money back guarantee if you don't see extreme success on the field so there's no risk no risk involved so grab one of those try it out for three weeks man and let me know how it go how it's going i'm always here to help um, and i take pride in putting out good programming so without further ado let's move on to the rush moves and let's get this vault of moves going for y'all all right, guys, this section of the video is probably going to be pretty long because this is going to be your library of rush moves as a defensive lineman. And listen, all of your defensive line moves are going to stem off three different type of rushes. Rush number one, a speed rush, working outside to the quarterback. Nothing fancy, just running the hoop. All oh, there's a bunch of moves that we're going to work off of that. And then we're going to get into a three-step counter. So a three-step counter, if my outside foot's up here, it's going to be one, two, three, counter, working back outside to the quarterback. And there's a lot of moves that come off the three-step counter. And then the next move is anything that's underneath. So I'm rushing here, I'm crossing over, working underneath. Now I'm here, I'm working upfield and working back underneath now. Again, guys, there's gonna be a ton of different moves based off this. I'm gonna try to get you guys different angles and show you exactly how to break down each move. And I'm gonna try my very best to perfect every single move that you see here. So starting off guys, we're gonna start with the speed rush. We're working outside. We have the C gap here, we have the edge. We wanna work to the quarterback as fast as possible. Again, it's a speed rush. Take as little steps, get to the quarterback as fast as possible. This is going to accompany a big, fat, vertical set by the tackle. So this hurdle right here, is the tackle's initial initial spot. This is the tackle's initial spot. And then you're a little bit wider because you're working with speed. You're not trying to fool anybody. You're working the C gap. Then you're going to get a big one, two, three, right to where this guy is. So got to get vertical here. So we have to beat the tackle to spot one and then worry about the move later. So my stance for a speed rush is going to be a little bit wider. My outside foot's going to be up. I'm not trying to pretend I'm doing something I'm not. He knows I'm rushing the C-gap. He knows he's going to have to beat me to the spot. This, again, is the tackle's initial kick right here. So this hurdle is representing the tackle's initial spot. I'm going to be really wide. So he has to get vertical and wide. And this is going to set up a lot of your other rushes. This is the tackle, obviously, in his third kick step. And then this yellow guy behind is going to be the quarterback. So our first rush is my personal favorite, which is the ghost rush. This is no move required. This is all bend, all speed, all skill. So what's gonna happen is you're gonna be rushing here. On my outside foot's up, I'm rushing, I'm going vertical. As soon as he throws his hands, I'm dipping underneath and I'm attacking the quarterback as fast as I possibly can. So I'm be working these hands all day today. And again, guys, you can do these with a partner. You can do them um, on air. It's all good. Just make sure that you're working the moves effectively, watching the video and trying to perfect them as much as possible. So I'm gonna show you guys how to perfect the ghost rush and I'm gonna coach myself through the process. My stance here, outside foot's up, ball snap. <clears throat> Maybe he wants to go a little bit, a little bit more vertical and a little bit wider. And again, we have C gap here, gap integrity, rush integrity. You guys saw all throughout the Super Bowl, you cannot give up your gap. If he sets really far vertical and you have the C gap, you have to stay in the C gap until the quarterback declares. If he wants to get wide, he wants to get vertical, that's fine. We have to have a great get off, beat him to the spot. And this is how you're going to defend, just getting washed out and getting boxed out by the tackle. So to start, my eyes are inside here on this tackle's outside shoulder always. Try not to look at this guy. And if you have somebody, you're working with a partner, make sure your partner's here and they get in this set. 
and you guys are going to know that the ghost rush work perfectly if you do not get touched. As soon as his hands are getting thrown, I'm reducing this shoulder here. So his hands are trying to hit my outside shoulder. I'm reducing this shoulder here. His hands are missing and I'm bending right underneath his hands, right at the quarterback. Ooh, right to the quarterback. Again, guys, I don't know that the tackle's here already. I'm anticipating he's going to just up based on how wide I am but I still need to have the best route to the quarterback possible. Good stance, good shin angle. Eyes on the tackle's outside shoulder. And that is going to be the ghost rush, which is going to set up a lot of different things. And the best defensive lineman will use that rush to set up new rushes. So if on the first play of the game, I use speed, I work a ghost, it's really effective. I make this tackle think I'm getting outside and playing with speed all game. The very next time you get a third and long situation, set it up with a three step work back inside and then that tackle is gonna be lost. And now you have two sacks under your belt within the first quarter of the game because you played smart football. All right guys, the next rush we're perfecting is the speed to power long arm. And yes, I still classify this as speed because it's really based on how your first three steps are going. So this is gonna be off a of three step. My outside foot's up here, one, two, three, and as soon as that third step comes in, I'm popping this guy and then getting to the quarterback. And the reason why it's so effective and why we are building off the speed rush, all these things I'm gonna show you, they're all building off of each other. So the first play, we work the speed rush. We get another third and 10, we get another third and 15. We just worked the speed rush, it was really effective. Now that tackle's gonna be going backwards in a hurry because he knows you have the C gap, he's gonna try to box you out. So he's gonna kick more up tall than last time because he knows he's gotta get backwards quick. So we're gonna set him up with the same three first steps we worked the ghost off of, but then this time on that third step, we're bringing the power right to his chest and we're gonna sit him down right in the quarterback's lap. So this is how you perfect the speed long arm. Outside foot's up. Eyes on this inside tackle. And this is exactly where he's gonna be on his back in the backfield. And the most important part of this speed long arm is on that third step, one, two, you're gonna be gaining ground quicker. On that third step, you need to sync up when you step with that inside foot with your punch for the most power, driving off that outside leg. One, two, he thinks I'm going out there. He's going backwards. He thinks I'm gonna work a ghost right now. And then as soon as this third step comes, that punch comes right to his chest, the same exact time. Sink it up, drive through him, and then play the QB. All right, guys, we've worked the ghost rush. We've perfected the speed to long arm. Now what builds off of that, the final progression of this is going to be speed to fake long arm to ghost. And this is where it all comes together. This is why it's important to master the basics, master your get off, master the rush, master running the hoop, getting to the quarterback, and then you can get crazy with these rushes, guys. Again, we're on the same three-step count, gaining ground, outside foot's up. One, two, three. We're not doing anything crazy here. We are showing him that we are rushing the C-gap. We're dominant in the fact that we say, I'm rushing the C-gap, I don't care what you say, I don't care where you kick, I'm beating you to the spot, and I'm going to hit your quarterback. So, this is going to be the fake long arm ghost. Inside eyes, three steps, one, two, three. On that third one, we're sinking up, just like last time. That third one, we're sinking up, and then as we show him our hand, right to the same spot of the chest, don't put your hands to his face, common issue here. They got guys trying to fake the, fake, the, fake the long arm and they put the hands to the face. Nobody's rushing with the hands to the face. If the hand is in my face, I know that it's coming. So hand right to the chest, same posture, same timing, same cadence. And then as that hand goes, we're then dropping it right to the ground, ripping through, getting underneath those hands, reducing those shoulders we're coming through and he's missing all day long. Inside eyes. <laughs> Again, same three steps, faking the chest, dropping it low. Inside eyes. And that is how you perfect the ghost rush, 
the speed to long arm and then building off of that, the speed to long arm to ghost. Another phenomenal rush, guys, is just the classic rip. Win with your get off, win with speed, run the hoop and work that rip in the process on that outside hand. So one, two, three, I'm bringing this and I'm getting to the quarterback. I'm ripping it up and away. Don't just take your rip here, it's not gonna do anything. You need to take your rip through the ceiling and then bend right before you rip as well. And this is how you're going to perfect the rip and perfect getting to the quarterback with speed because that's the biggest thing. The rip is just always something you should have in your toolbox. So simple here, same three step, rip into the quarterback. Inside eyes. And it's hard on this bag to really perfect that rip because you really need some force to lean into with the rip. That's the best way to do it. You're really leaning into the guy and using the guys as a, as a foundation to get to the quarterback, using his body weight to really run that hoop, get your hips around and accelerate to the quarterback. Also a great way to get a flag called if a guy's been holding you all game, just work an outside rip. Work an outside rip, take it to the ceiling. It's like impossible for the refs to miss that. So if you're getting held all game by the tackle, just work an outside rip and sell it all the way up here. Your shoulder pad's gonna come up. It's gonna look like a hold regardless your shoulder pad looks really weird up here. And then all you need is just a little pull and then they'll see it, they'll throw the flag. The next move I wanna work is an outside spin. So this is a little bit more complicated, a little bit dangerous to use, but a great tool for all my advanced rushers. So me out of a three step again, outside foot's up, one, two, three. And now we need to take that outside hand. Very complicated, very complicated rush right here. So you have to have the right hands by the tackle in order to execute an outside spin properly. So his hands, they can't be, you can't have the tackle pivoted out here to spin because you can't get his outside hand. In order for the spin to work properly, you have to be able to displace this outside hand. Otherwise, you're just gonna get caught and then it's gonna delay you getting to the quarterback and you're better off working a rip here. You're better off working a chop over and something to get that outside hand, a, a, double, a double chop down, um, single chop down, chop rip. But if you're here, you can't work that outside spin because you have to take this hand and get it up and over and it just, as you can see, it just doesn't work effectively. So you need vertical hands by the tackle. So a great way to do this is by tightening down your split a little bit as defensive end. So the tackle sets more vertical than out. Cause as soon as he sets out and you get in that three step, he's gonna pivot his shoulders this way. And then again, this outside hand's here. You need the tackle to be here and you need to beat this outside hand, which is more inside than it is outside. And then you can effectively displace that, use his shoulder to work off the quarterback. So working the outside spin here, off of the three step, inside eyes, outside foot, one, two, three. I'm taking this outside hand and I'm chopping here. And as I'm chopping this foot, this outside leg is in sync with this, this chop. In sync here, chop, crossing, and then I need to keep my shoulder blades, my scapula, this shoulder, I need to keep it tight to the tackle to throw that elbow to effectively get to the quarterback. And that's gonna look better at full speed. But again, we need vertical hands here. We can't have outside hands. We can't have the tackle face this way when the quarterback's over there. The outside spin will not work. You're wasting your time. So again, on that step, in the third step here, chopping is as I'm chopping, this outside leg is crossing over with me. Crossover step. Crossover, chop at the same time here. Lean into this guy. You just beat his hand, lean into him, and now spinning and then throwing that elbow then get in here. You have to throw the elbow on the spin. Otherwise you're gonna spin and you don't throw the elbow and then you're gonna end up way out here and you're just off track to hit the quarterback. You're just wasting space. Again, your bend needs to be as tight to this tackle. Okay, you beat the tackle as tight to the quarterback. That's the best way to get a sack. That's the best way to have the best rushes. So I'm gonna show you guys what this looks like full speed. So again, I'm gonna tighten my stance just a couple inches here to make sure that I'm getting vertical set out of this guy. I'm putting pressure on his outside shoulder now, so he has to set vertical, otherwise I can just work inside. So if I attack him here and try to beat him with speed, he's going to have to have vertical hands. If I'm way out here, and I'm trying to rush here, he's gonna pivot his shoulders towards me. That's naturally what you wanna do. It's like basketball, you're just boxing the guy out. So I wanna tighten down my stance here and I wanna beat him with those first three steps vertical on a straight line to keep his hand straight to execute this outside spin properly. And again, three steps, crossover and then throw in that hand. Obviously you wanna beat this hand. 
So my guy's hands are like this, so I'm pivoting him a little bit extra than he normally would be because I'm trying to get this hand vertical. If this hand's vertical, then that tackle tackle's still square to the line of scrimmage. Outside foot's up, tighten down, inside eyes. <clears throat> tighten down. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> And that is not as easy because again, if you're perfecting a spin, you need to put that shoulder onto the tackle, who's gonna obviously have a little bit of anchor in his system so that you can really launch yourself and catapult yourself using his body weight. And obviously that dummy gives me no resistance. So it's not as easy to get a clean spin, but if you have a partner, it's the best way to do it. The tighter you are with a spin, the better chop crossover you have, the more effective your spin is gonna be generally. So. Going inside, it might be a little bit easier for us to do. So that is how you perfect the outside spin move. The next move we are perfecting as a defensive lineman is the forklift. And this can be done out of power, out of a good engagement, and then forklifting the hands up and away. Or it can be done out of speed as well. Personally, I like to use it with speed, especially with a tackle who's really liking to throw his hands early and show me hands. Those tackles that have really, really long arms, this is fantastic, guys. If you can grab a hold of their wrist, they are now your puppet. You can do whatever you want. So the forklift, we approaching and then taking this outside hand with my outside hand, lifting up and away, and then finishing with a rip through. So this is really building off of that rip. Again, we got an undisciplined tackle here who wants to show us hands. So outside foot up, inside eyes. One, two, three. On that third step, I'm taking this outside hand that he already has extended just a little bit I'm grabbing that wrist, I'm pushing it up and away, and as I push it up and away, I'm finishing with this rip here, and then putting my foot through, and then securing my rush to the quarterback. So full speed, this is what the forklift with the outside hand is going to look like. And again, you guys can do this, you can engage working power here. I don't have somebody to hold this for me, so it's hard for me to work power. You can do it, press the guy, and then working the hands up and away as well. <laughs> And the important part of the forklift is seeing that outside hand, transitioning your eyes. You're starting in your stance, outside shoulder of the tackle. Now you have to transition your eyes on that three step to his hand, which I didn't do the first time. Outside foot up, inside eyes. That is how you perfect the outside hand forklift speed D-line rush move. All right, now guys, working my favorite rush sequence here. This is a three-step counter, and you can really do all these moves out of a one-step counter too, because it's really that odd step. You can even do this move out of a five-step counter if you're feeling really crazy, but if you're doing five steps, your odds are you're getting way too far upfield, so I like three-step is the best for this. I go outside foot, one, two, three, and I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it. This is gonna set up a lot of different rushes for you guys. If you can master this, you'll get a lot of different rushes down. So outside foot's up, we're sticking with the same three. We're gaining ground, we're rushing the outside here. So inside foot, or outside foot's up, inside eyes, one, two, and then on that third step, we're now taking it right to his midline. We're threatening him inside. The point of this is that tackles, if you've rushed outside all game, Tackles want to just box you out. It's the most frustrating thing ever. So when you counter them with this three step and you attack their midline with this third step, it forces them to stop their feet. Then you can work the outside or you can work back inside. It forces them to stop their feet. It gives you an advantage so that you can work hands and rush to the outside. If you just continue just rushing outside all game long, he's gonna take his outside hand and just wash you downfield. It's the most frustrating thing ever. So especially as a high school defensive end, if you can get this down, ooh, you can really open up a plethora of different rush moves. You can work inside, you can work outside, and we're gonna get into it right now. My favorite move out of the three-step counter is very standard, but it's super, super effective. What we have, so outside foot up, all it is is a chop and an over. All we have is this, outside foot's up, inside eyes, one, two, three, threatening his midline with this, and then we're taking this hand, which is vertical, we're chopping it inside, and then working over here. We're not working up and over, we're not giving up our inside peck here, we're just going over, right over, defeating the hand again. We're defeating the wrist here, and then defeating the elbow and the whole arm here, and then getting around and then accelerating to the quarterback. 
So again, on that third step, one, two, attack the midline, chop, over, drop. And then once you work this over, chop, and then this over needs to be accompanied with you sinking this inside shoulder that you have all the way to the ground and then ripping back up through. So it's really a chop over to a rip. And then working a rip off of everything just ensures that you're getting good pad level and getting the best bend of the quarterback by using the guy as leverage so that you can bend more effectively. So out of this particular move, I need to have inside vertical hands. So I'm gonna tighten down my stance a little bit. I need the hands to be here. The hands can't be out here because I can't, I can't work a, uh, an effective chop if this tackle is just boxing me out this way. So I'm gonna tighten down my, my alignment and I'm going to work a vertical and I'm going to beat him to the spot vertically. So he has to set more vertical and then all he has to guard me is using that outside hand. So we got vertical hands here. Again, this hurdle is his initial spot. He's already in his third kick. I'm gonna tighten down my stance a little bit here. One, two, three, chop, over. Again, this hand's gonna be vertical. It looks like he's facing the opposite way. It's just vertical hands. Tighten down my stance, inside eyes. <laughs> Need a little bit more head fake there to really sell this rush. So again, the purpose of the three-step counter is to get him to stop his feet. Yeah. That's the one. And that's how you're going to perfect the chop over out of a three-step counter. For this next move, out of the three-step counter on that third step, we got an outside jump. We're jumping outside with this inside foot, boom. And then we're working this hand just a little over. Don't get the elbow up here. That's how you give up your inside and get caught up and get put on your back. So out of that three-step, really jabbing with this one, stab it, and then just working a lateral jump and then accelerating to the quarterback as fast as we possibly can on this one. So the footwork is going to be one, two, three, jumping out, working that hand here, and then just bending, accelerating the quarterback as fast as possible. So full speed, here's what we got. Inside eyes. And again, this is just a little stutter. Don't be afraid to set this guy up with this little stutter. Head fake, set him up, juke him out. And with this, particular rush, you have to anticipate that you're gonna beat this guy and you're jumped way out here. So now you have to realign yourself, plan off that foot and get to the quarterback. Don't round it out here, wasting time. With the jump, you're going to beat this guy. You're going to have lateral space to work with. So put your foot in the ground and accelerate to the quarterback as fast as possible. Again, this hurdle is the tackle's initial spot. So I'm here, tighten down, inside eyes. So I'm a bad coach. I literally just did exactly what I told you guys not to do. I jumped and then I had to round my way to the quarterback. So anticipate it. It was an okay rep, but it's all about the timing of these things. So feel it and correct it. Inside eyes. Yeah. All right, full speed, full rep. Inside eyes, set him up, good head fake. And that is how you perfect the lateral jump swipe out of a three-step counter as a defensive lineman. All right, now we just have a classic defensive line move, just a double swipe. Can work this off the three-step counter, go outside, can work this off the three-step counter and cross over and go inside. So we're gonna do both ways here. I'll show you exactly how to do it. So again, this is the tackle's initial spot. Really heavy vertical set here, almost four yards deep because we're tight down and we're hitting one, two, three steps, three big steps, three big get off steps. Ensuring that you're winning the get off is going to help you effectively get to the quarterback and effectively set up these moves. So these are three steps. The three step counter, we're working this double swipe off. One, two, three here, or one, two, three here. And when you work it inside, it's really gonna be working both arms versus just the outside. The outside arm 
I don't want to work both hands here. I just want to work this hand. So I'm just going to work this hand right here, but inside, I don't want to work th just this hand because I'm overextending myself inside. So I'm going to be working both hands and then ripping up through, working that, working that inside hand with my inside hand, that outside hand with my outside hand. This is something you're going to have to build off of and use a dip and a rip off of these. So swipe, dip, rip, swipe, dip, rip. Let's see how it works. Inside eyes. So I kind of gave him a high five there, which is why the rush wasn't effective. So again, just transition your eyes to the, the outside shoulder of the tackle when you're in your stance, outside shoulder. Then as you're in that three step, transfer your eyes to those hands. Don't get caught looking at his body like I just did. It's a solid rep outside. Now let me show you what inside looks like. Again, working both hands. All right, working inside here. Again, working both hands. Don't give him a high five. Transition your eyes to the inside hand on this one. Three step counter, inside eyes. That's more of an inside move. So you don't necessarily need to work the inside counter off it, but it can be effective. It's just a big time crossover and you just have to make sure you work the hands. Otherwise you're gonna get washed out. But as a defensive line, that's what you should be working on. But maybe that's more of an inside, an inside drill we'll get to next video. So let's perfect the outside for right now. Working the outside, double swipe on a three-step counter. Again, tighten down your stance, get this guy vertical, stop this feet. Now let's work the hands. And that is how you perfect the double swipe to the outside off of a three-step counter, which is great for all defensive linemen. The last move we're working off a three-step counter is a fake outside spin, which is incredible. So we're going outside foot's up, one, two, three, faking this, putting that foot in the ground, then working back. We wanna make this tackle think that he is getting the best of us and he is going to wash us outside. Outside foot's up, one, two, three, working inside, stopping his feet, crossing over with a chop here. Now I'm working back right underneath. And this is gonna be tough again. I don't have a guy to lean on. The spins work best with a guy that you can really lean on and put your weight on. So again, the spin is a cross chop with a crossover step at the same time. So I'll show you from a better angle. So the last time we worked spin, we wanted this inside hand because we were spinning outside. We wanted this outside hand, we wanted inside vertical hands. So we wanted to chop here and then spin out here. This time, we want him to turn his shoulders and try to box us out and think that he has won the rep. Working vertical, outside foot's up, one, two, three with this counter, crossing here, cross chop. Don't actually chop though, because you're working back inside. Show it like you just, span, you just spun. So counter step here, I'm not chopping, I'm making it look like a bad spin. And then here, I'm putting this outside foot in the ground and then working right back underneath. Let's see if I can perfect this for you. Again, this is the tackle. This is a him in his third or fourth kick step. Cross chop back in. I'm gonna have to put that in the power vid because straight up like I need something to lean on to be able to perfect the spin like that. So make sure you guys stay tuned. Make sure you sub to the YouTube channel. I'm dropping new videos every week. But with that being said, this is gonna wrap up the video. It's been a little bit longer than I expected. So next time we're gonna work better defensive line drills and we're also gonna work power and we're also going to work all inside rush moves. So make sure you guys stay tuned. I'll have somebody here so I can work good spins. Make sure you guys check out a five-star football package too. The best thing you can do as a high school football player for all your training needs met in one place. No need for a personal trainer when you got me. See you guys, salute.